Here is your forecast first with meteorologist Garrett Hyde. Overall, fairly warm day for us today. Just a couple more clouds now starting to fill in for us this evening. Things will stay pretty much about this way throughout the rest of our night tonight, but breezy conditions will be sticking with us as we head into the next couple of days as well. For now, we're still relatively mild at around 79 degrees outside and almost 20 mile per hour winds out of the south. This is, again, something that will stick with us throughout the rest of our night tonight and into our day tomorrow. But if you thought today was warm, well, we're going to continue to warm up, especially for our Memorial Day tomorrow. We'll take a closer look at that and the rest of the week ahead in your full forecast here on Local 4 News at 10. Coming up, a memorial set up on the I-74 walkway for the victims of last weekend's incident. What's being put there to honor their memory? And a house in Davenport badly damaged by a fire. What details we know and if anybody was hurt? Local 4 News at 10 starts right now. WHBF is local for you. This is Local 4 News at 10. Good evening, everyone, and thank you all for joining us for Local 4 News at 10. I'm Matt Holderman. First tonight, family and friends are remembering the victims from last week's tragic incident on the I-74 bike and pedestrian path by setting up a memorial on the path. That is tonight's top story. The memorial honors both of the men who died, 21-year-old Ethan Gonzalez and 18-year-old Anthony Castaneda. Gonzalez was declared dead at the scene last Sunday after police say he was struck by an SUV driving down the path. Castaneda died on Thursday, four days after the incident, succumbing to his injuries. The driver of the SUV, 46-year-old Shabria Harris, faces reckless homicide charges for both of their deaths. She's being held in Rock Island County Jail on $2 million bond. And 14 people are dealing with injuries tonight after the boat they were on suddenly exploded. Take a look at this. This crazy incident happened yesterday in Seneca, Illinois, near the Springbrook Marina. It's about 50 miles east of Princeton, Illinois. 17 people were on board this boat when it suddenly exploded and became engulfed in flames. Again, 14 of them were hurt and had to be taken to hospitals. Now, 13 of them escaped with non-life-threatening injuries, fortunately, but one was in critical condition. It's still unclear how the boat exploded. At least one person in Davenport is without a home tonight after flames tore through their house yesterday. Fire crews responded to a house fire here on Clay Street in Davenport around 2 p.m. yesterday. You can see the house now boarded up with signs of severe damage everywhere. Now, fortunately, firefighters say nobody was hurt in the blaze. Clay Street was closed for several hours as firefighters worked on putting out the flames yesterday. The cause of this is currently under investigation. A man from Galesburg is in the hospital tonight after a wild car crash. Illinois State Police say he hit a horse that was in the road. Here's what we know about this. The man injured in this crash is 35-year-old Eric Hansen. State Police say he was driving north on 140th Street, just south of 160th Avenue in rural Cameron, Illinois, around 8.30 this morning. Police say Hansen was traveling at a high rate of speed and struck a horse that was standing on the road. The horse unfortunately died from the impact, and Hansen is now being charged with failure to reduce speed to avoid an accident. There are no other updates on his condition right now. A Davenport man is in jail tonight after police say he assaulted a woman early this morning. 29-year-old Darren Williams now faces domestic assault and firearm charges. Police say just before 1230 this morning, Williams punched a woman and threw her in the street near West 4th Street and North Sturdivant Street. After they arrested Williams, well, police say he asked them to search his house for his cell phone. So police say they did, and they also found a gun and marijuana in the process. Williams is now being held in Scott County Jail on a $11,000 bond. And another Davenport man faces assault charges tonight after police say he hit two people in the head with the butt of a rifle. Police arrested 32-year-old Jeremy Dora Thursday night. They say they got calls about a large fight at Timberland Ridge Apartments just after 9 p.m. When they arrived, they found two people suffering from severe injuries to their heads and found out it was from the butt of Dora's gun. Dora is now being held in Scott County Jail on a $15,000 bond. And if you see news happening, forward it to Local 4 on the free Our Quad Cities app. You can sign up for breaking news alerts, track the weather, and share videos and pictures that you want to see highlighted right here on Local 4. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. 
Well, the popular Channel Cat water taxi is now officially up and running for the season. It opened up this Friday at 9 a.m. Guests can enjoy different sights on the Mississippi River while aboard the boat, and that includes the Rock Island Rapids, which are considered one of the most dangerous sections of the upper Mississippi River. Of course, the boat avoids getting too close to that. The water taxi makes multiple stops around the Quad Cities, but that currently excludes the John Deere Commons dock, which is undergoing construction. Now, we were able to talk with some guests who enjoyed a great time on board today. Advertised on the news one time, so then we come out like five years ago. So we've been coming every year ever since. We bring all our family out, and we're like, first thing we want to do is take you out on the boat. We are excited with my kids and husband to see what this trip is all about. And the Channel Cat will run until Labor Day this year. The John Deere Common Stock is expected to open in a few weeks. Well, it's really been a weekend full of events here in the Quad Cities, whether it's the Channel Cat opening, pools opening, or Memorial Day celebrations. And there's still quite a few festivities left to go. So we want to share with you a list of some that you can enjoy on Memo Memorial Day tomorrow. So first at 9 in the morning, uh, the historic Summit Church in Davenport will have their 103rd annual Memorial Day service. That's one of the oldest ongoing services in the Quad Cities. At 1045, the Rock Island National Cemetery on the Arsenal will, of course, hold their Memorial Day celebration. That's sure to be a packed ceremony as always. And later in the afternoon will be Bettendorf's Memorial Day ceremony. It starts at 2 p.m. at Bettendorf Veterans Memorial Park. And if you're still planning on traveling, maybe you're traveling home tomorrow if you're here visiting the Quad Cities, gas prices are unfortunately still not looking great anywhere in the country. Here's a look at the latest averages from AAA. The national average price per gallon clocks in at 461. It's two cents higher than a week ago. Fortunately, the Iowa average is much lower than that at 426 a gallon, but it's gone up 10 cents in the past week. Illinois has stayed stagnant at 498 this week. Well, another event other than Memorial Day this past week was Zip Code Day on Friday for Bettendorf, and Unity Point Health Trinity in Bettendorf is celebrating a couple of Zip Code Day babies. Let's take a look at these cuties right here. The first uh, is Adeline right here. She was born just after 2.30 in the morning. Her parents are Patrick Gosselin and Haley Tower. And here's another baby girl. Stormy is her name. She was born just before 2.30 in the afternoon. Her parents are Ben and Jennifer Wilson, so congratulations to the new parents. Now, meteorologist Garrett High with your local pinpoint forecast. Well, certainly a great day for us today overall. Quite a bit of a summer like day overall. We did see temperatures at least into the upper 80s. Plenty of sunshine. Now, the only major drawback to most of us at least being into the upper 80s. Well, if you're a fan of summer like temperatures, certainly you might have enjoyed that. But I know one thing was fairly hard to ignore was. So a bit of a breezier day for us today once again. But overall, I mean, yeah, ignoring the winds temporarily, I mean, another great day for, I guess, a Sunday for Memorial Day weekend. A little bit extended for some of us, but certainly still relatively nice for us, at least throughout every day today. Plenty of sunshine. Even now, we're still relatively mild at around 79 degrees outside. Now, you notice winds out of the south currently at around 18 miles per hour, gusting at around 35 or so, just a little above that. It's still relatively at least... Feeling a little extra moisture outside with those fuel-like temperatures, even with the wind, about the temperature or, or degree or so above the current temperature outside our door. But otherwise, as we head into the rest of at least our extended weekend into the our night 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 time tonight, we'll continue to be relatively breezy, mild, and we'll continue with these breezy conditions well into Memorial Day and well into at least the beginning of June, which is already just around the corner for us. But Memorial Day tomorrow is certainly looking to be fairly warm out of the three days we have had so far, and that will lead us to the very end of May, the end of meteorological spring and the beginning of meteorological summer, which already comes around here on June 1st. And temperatures certainly not going to be looking too summer-like out ahead of us as we'll likely see some cooler air begin to filter in to the QCA here a little bit later on this week. For now, though, not a whole lot going on. A little bit of just cloud cover throughout our area. For now, though, we're going to wait until the system overall well off towards our west. Talking a little bit about it yesterday. This whole thing is going to continue to work its way northward. Already had two low pressure systems begin to merge. And this will continue to work its way southwards, at least a little bit more for us, bringing in the potential for a few more storms into closer towards central Iowa and then eventually towards us as we head into Tuesday. So. Future gas, we can time it all out a little bit more for us. We continue to stay relatively quiet throughout the rest of our night tonight. And with those strong southerly winds, we're going to keep funneling in more and more of that warm air for us. We get up to around 91 degrees tomorrow. A good amount of sunshine for us. And again, we are going to continue to stay pretty breezy throughout the day. 
But most of the severe weather for at least Monday or so will continue to stay further out to our west, closer towards central Iowa. It won't be until we head to Tuesday when that cold front starts to arrive here into the Quad Cities and could be park sparking up a few more showers and thunderstorms a little bit later into Tuesday evening. Again, that's going to be really dictated by how much sunlight we can get into the overarching system. The more we get, the stronger the storms. For the time being, though, we are still looking at a level 2 out of 5 potential chance for some stronger storms here on Tuesday evening. Still very likely to produce more likely winds and large hail rather than tornado threats, but that's certainly not out of the question for us over the next few, or at least for Tuesday. Beyond that, though, temperatures are certainly going to be feeling a lot colder. You notice we go from 91, 86, down to 75 as we head into Wednesday, which is... June 1st, by the way. So that'll be certainly starting off the beginning of meteorological summer, a little bit cooler for us here in the QCA. But otherwise, tomorrow, or tonight, I guess, I'd say too, staying relatively mild, and we're certainly looking at a lot of a cooler start to summer already here on Wednesday. And as we've been talking about all weekend, too, 91 tomorrow on Memorial Day. So mm -hmm. for some of the festivities outside, going to be a, a hot one. Certainly going to be a hot one, just like we usually talk about in the summer. Make sure you stay hydrated. Watch out for anything in the, in, well, maybe your family or pets in the car, too. Right. And, of course, stay hydrated and protect yourself from the sun where you can. Right. All great advice, Garrett. Thank you. All right. Well, still to come, a wild finish on the diamond today. We'll tell you what went right for the White Sox and what an Almond tennis star has to say about bringing home the school's first tennis state championship. Dustin Nolan has all of it next in sports. You're watching Local 4 News at 10. Oh, check one, two, check one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. Matt. Hey, uh, wondering how light we are back there for you guys because um, it seemed, it looked to me like we were on track a little bit and now I got like a minute light. Oh, okay. I don't know what happened to my timer on here. All right. Well, that's, that's good. 20 or 25 light. I'll, I'll take that. Cool. Thank you. And now, local sports with Dustin Nolan. A Memorial Day tradition. The Indy 500 hitting the track. This is the 106th running of the greatest spectacle in racing at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So let's get out to the action and see how they did. And check out this flyover. Man, this is pretty spectacular there. All right, now let's get to the race. We start with lap 152. Scott McLaughlin here with a big crash here on turn four, and he's going to be out of the race. Then we got Jimmy Johnson on lap 195. He would spin out of control and crash. That would bring out a red flag, and he would be out of the race as well. Then we move to the finish line here of the race as Marcus Erickson. He's going to cross the finish line to win the Indy 500 under a caution flag. So congratulations to Marcus Erickson on winning the Indy 500. 
All right, now let's get to some Major League Baseball. Cubs versus White Sox. Bottom of the 11th, White Sox down 4-3. Adam Engel, he's going to hit this one into the gap for a double. A.J. Pollock, he's going to score there as White Sox tied at 4-4. Bottom of the 12th inning now, Jake Berger with a single walk-off here for the victory as the White Sox win 5-4 in extra innings. All right, now to the Brewers versus Cardinals. Fifth inning, two on. Jace Peterson drives one deep for a three-run jack. His fourth of the year. Brewers lead 4-0 at this point. Eighth inning now. Brewers up 6-0. And Lorenzo Kane, he's going to take this pitch deep for a two-run home run as the Brewers win big today 8-0. And the Quad Cities River Bandits with a tough loss to the Fort Wayne Tin Caps, losing 6-1. to one. The River Bandits now fall to 18-27 and 27 on the season. Now let's get to some golf action. Charles Schwab final round playoff hole. On the first playoff hole here, Sam Burns drains a lengthy punt from the fringe of, for a birdie here. Then it's up to Scotty Scheffler with a chance to tide. He needs to make a birdie from deep. But he just misses the cup right here. Burns wins his fourth career PGA Tour win. So congratulations to him. Alderman tennis player Nicholas Patrick won the state championship on Saturday, 7-5 and 6-4. This kid is just a freshman, and if you haven't seen Nicholas play, well, you should. This kid is for real. Going 25-0 this year, never losing a match or a set. I got a chance to catch up with Nicholas to ask him how it felt to bring home Alderman's first state title in tennis. Well, it just means the world, being able to come home with it, being able to represent my dad, represent all the men, and like we talked about earlier in the year, representing all the people that have made so many sacrifices and seeing all the hard work that's paid off in the end and all the hours in the gym and on the court and off the court, just trying to better myself as a player and as a person. And just to see it all kind of come together, it's been pretty special. I think just that moment when I won the championship, just seeing that last ball go out and just putting my arms in the air, just realizing that I'd finally won and I'd been taken out. That was a pretty special moment, looking at my grandparents and my sister and my parents and all the people who had come up to support all the way from here in the Quad Cities and just seeing those people's faces just light up, it, that's a moment I'll never forget. And again, congratulations to Nicholas on bringing home that first state title on tennis. And I uh, met up with him, and he was back practicing today um, after winning it yesterday. Uh, you know, there's no days off, right? If you want to be a champion, you got to keep the grind going. Absolutely. And can we get a he's a freshman chant <laughs> going, too? I <laughs> mean, that's a uh, phenomenal Woo! for a uh, 13 or 14-year-old. I mean, that's uh, awesome. State championship. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. He, he's phenomenal. As we were saying earlier, uh, him in his sport, he's probably as good as anybody in there sport mm -hmm. here in the Quad Cities. So again, congratulations to Nicholas. Absolutely, Dustin. Thanks very much. All right, well, still ahead, President Biden visited Uvalde, Texas today in the wake of this past week's tragedy. So we'll show you some of what he had to say and what people in Uvalde said to him. You're watching Local 4 News at 10. I'll just read a little. Oh, probably. Okay, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I got us 21 light on here, so. Cool, thanks.
WHBF is local for Davenport and local for you. This is Local 4 News at 10. President Biden is wrapping up his visit to Uvalde, Texas today to meet with the people affected by Tuesday's mass school shooting. That leads to tonight's national headlines. It was a day filled with paying respect to the lives lost for the president. He visited Robb Elementary School where the shooting happened, leaving 19 children and two teachers dead. People in the town were happy to see Biden pay respect, but some asked him to do more than that. And our correspondent Jayla Washington is in Uvalde, Texas tonight with the details on Biden's visit. Jayla, can you tell us what it's been like there today? To answer your question, it's been an extremely heavy and somber day here in Uvalde. President Biden is actually moments away from first responders here at the airport before he leaves for the day. People of all ages line the streets this morning. The entire city seeming to shut down for President Biden's arrival. The president began his visit by stopping by the school, taking a moment at the memorial there. Afterward, he and the First Lady went to a mass at a local Catholic church and also met with families of victims who died. This town is just in the beginning of the healing process, and while many appreciate the president and others showing respect, they also want action to make sure mass shootings don't keep happening. I think what they need to do is put their all political, uh, anything political aside and start thinking like a human, not politics. Politics should be their second, and I think humanity should be first. You really can't meet anyone in this town who isn't personally affected by what happened. We're expecting some sort of update here shortly from President Biden before he wraps up his visit. Reporting in Uvalde, Jayla Washington, back to you. And certainly a somber week in Uvalde continuing. Thank you, Jayla. Well, an autopsy for a young boy found dead in a suitcase in the woods in southern Indiana shows that he died from an electrolyte imbalance. Listen to this story. Indiana State Police say it's most likely the child died of gastroenteritis, vomiting and diarrhea, and that led to dehydration. Police say a mushroom hunter found the child's body in a heavily wooded area back on April 16th. Investigators believe the child was five years old. They say they don't know where he died, but they described the boy as clean and clothed and said that he appears to have been well cared for. And the child's remains were left in a suitcase that had distinctive Las Vegas designs on its front and back. Well, let's move on to Ukraine now. Turkey's president has vowed his country cannot say yes to Sweden and Finland joining NATO. It's a blow to the Biden administration's push to bolster the alliance, and it comes as Russian forces capture another city in eastern Ukraine. CBS News correspondent Imtiaz uh, Tai, excuse me, he reports from Dnipro tonight. Volodymyr Zelensky on the ground in Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city. This is the first time the president has been seen outside the Kyiv region since Russia's invasion began over three months ago. It's estimated around 2,100 apartment blocks were destroyed in the fierce battle to push Russian forces out of here. But in the east and south of Ukraine, Moscow is only advancing by air, from the sea, and most brutally by land. In the fiercely contested eastern Donbass region, Ukrainian forces are outmanned 7 to 1. Russia has made solid gains here and looks poised to seize all of Luhansk province. To the south, in Kherson, small villages like this have become a front line. Homes ruined and lives shattered. It's here we meet Olga, who's the head of the local village council. So many terrible things have happened since the start of this war. Where do you find the strength to face it every day? I told myself from day one that I needed to be here, she says, that I needed to be with the people I live and work with and wait for my son who is on the front line. Olga says she wants the world to know her village was once beautiful and asks us to promise to return here to see it like it once was, a promise we make. But any kind of peace in Ukraine is a long way off. These men are among the 2,300 fighters from the Azovstal steel plant in Mariupol who were ordered to surrender last week. The Kremlin's propaganda machine says large sums of money and gold were found here in the mangled wreckage of the steel plant and accused the POWs of looting it, allegations Russian forces themselves stand accused of. 
Locals report that as Russia clears makeshift graves, the remains of some of the dead in Mariupol are being piled up in places like this disused supermarket, a horror the few civilians who still remain here can barely come to terms with. President Zelensky has really been a symbol of unity and strength since the start of this war, but as Russia continues to seize more territory in the eastern Donbass region, that unity and strength is needed now more than ever. In Piaz Times, CBS News, Dnipro. All right, after the break, meteorologist Garrett Hyde will have one final look at your forecast. Stick with us. You're watching Local 4 News at 10. Okay, uh, update here. We're going to we're going to start with a look at the weather and then sort of um, talk about uh, whatever Garrett wants to talk about. You know, so yeah, cool. Perfect. Sounds good. <laughs> Two and a half minutes. Yeah, we're keeping that. Yep. WHBF is local for Kiwani and local for you. This is Local 4 News at 10. All right, one final check of the weather here. Garrett, this is all you. All right, yeah, certainly final weather for sure for a lot of, or at least for me anyway, but otherwise, as we head throughout the rest of our night tonight, still going to continue to see some more cloudy conditions with us. We'll continue to wait for that to kind of stall out front well off our west. That'll arrive a little bit closer towards Tuesday or so. That'll be bringing our next chance for some showers and thunderstorms through the QCA. Otherwise, though, we continue to stay relatively mild throughout the rest of our night tonight. Memorial Day tomorrow is certainly going to be a hot one as we return to the 90s. Tuesday, though, that's when we continue to stay fairly warm. Again, that's where that chance of some showers and thunderstorms move through the area. That'll be mainly Tuesday evening. We'll see those thunderstorms move through and that'll certainly bring those temperatures down as we head into the start of meteorological summer already here on Wednesday. 
So we're not uh, seeming as uh, summer-like as we continue to work our way down into those mid-70s for a while. So. Awesome. Yeah, looking forward to some of those 70s and 80s. That's like the perfect weather. Well, it's a lot cooler. I'm not a big fan of the 90s personally. So if we can get, right. keep it in that 70, 80 margin. I hear perfect. you. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right. Well, I can't let you go quite yet. I believe you have uh, one uh, more announcement for us tonight. Yes. Yeah, so if you guys have been following me along on uh, Facebook or Twitter, I know I've made the announcement, uh, I think, a couple, uh, about a week or so ago. But this is my final forecast with, uh, with WHVF. And uh, at least uh, here in the Quad Cities, I'll be moving on to the Cedar Rapids area here within the next about uh, a couple weeks or so. We'll be uh, working up there. Uh, so that'll be a fun little area. I get to go home a little bit, back in my home market. It was my very first internship there, so it's be kind of cool to make a little bit of a full circle uh, coming back to uh, back in Cedar Rapids where it all began. How excited so, are you? Yeah. I mean, that's going to be pretty cool to get closer to home. I mean, you're from the Quads, or the Cedar Rapids market, so how excited are you to finally get back to kind of your home market that you probably grew up watching? I mean, yeah, it's super, certainly, certainly super cool. I know a lot of, uh, at least us in the TV industry, a lot of us like to do what we can to get a little bit home or away from home, wherever we like to go. So sure. it's certainly a, a big time achievement, at least to be back home once again. We'll see where things go beyond there. Definitely. Any, uh, for the last couple seconds here, any favorite memories to share or uh, anything like that? Um, I, I know the most memorable thing for me at least, and I know for a lot of you guys as well out who are watching, uh, probably back in August 10th, 2020, was a crazy day for a lot of us, and certainly mm -hmm. a day that will be forever remembered here. All right, well, We're gonna it's been you great here. to have you here, guys all. And thank you all for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday night. Follow Local 4 News 24 hours a day on OurQuadCities.com. Hairstyles provided by Infinity Salon and Spa.